Hi there. Hey. Um, re really, a really strong sort of, I don't know, first 35 overs in, in that match. Did you feel like, had you maybe taken that catch with, with Ben, that, that that would have been a really strong position for you guys at halfway? Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, I think when it comes to big players and taking sort of those half chances, uh, we definitely pride ourselves on doing that as a fielding unit. Um, and we practice those as well uh, a lot. So for us, uh, it is a little bit disappointing. But then again, like, I don't think you can put it down to sort of that just that one opportunity. It also comes back to, you know, being able to execute our bowling plans and being disciplined as well. Um, yeah, I, I don't think would be disappointed not to take it, but I wouldn't pin it on that, essentially. Um, obviously, in the game of cricket, you, you make your own luck and you make other opportunities as well. So, yeah, it's just obviously disappointing that the momentum had shifted from then on. So, you know, which kind of got away from us, especially towards the death. Yeah, we know Ben is a special player who can do great things. You had him tied down for a, for a long time. You were shutting his boundary options. Did you? Was there any part of you that was fearing that if you didn't get him, he would ultimately sort of explode at some point? Um, look, with all the great players around the world, this you know that's always going to be the case. You know, they know what they're doing. They know how to build an innings essentially. Uh, and obviously, when you get the pace of the wicket and you get a feeling for the bowlers, especially when they're coming back for their second and third spell, you've already seen them. So uh, from that point of view, yeah, look, I, again, it comes back to our own sort of, own sort of discipline and uh, our execution of our plans, which didn't quite happen at the back end. But we're quite obviously happy with the way that we built pressure and the way we came back. Uh, showed a lot of character, I thought, from the guys, uh, both from, from a fielding point of view and as a bowling unit as well, so, which, was, which was positive. And, and you, you got away a few, a few nice shots. You were sort of ticking along nicely. Were you, <laughs> do you feel that ultimately 179 was, was not quite you know, a great representation of that pitch because you were, you were getting away quite well? Uh, yeah, it was a good pitch. Uh, it's probably one of the better pitches that we've played on in this tournament, um, where the, the the pace and the bounce of the wicket was quite consistent. Um, so yeah, I don't think that's a fair representation, and that's that's disappointing for our batting group. Uh, if I'm really honest. Tajish, could I just ask you to look forward to um, Sunday's game? Obviously, a bit of a low-key spectacle in some ways today with the crowd versus what will be pretty yeah. extraordinary probably on Sunday. Um, yeah, look, I think to arguably play the best team in the comp at the top of the table is something that we're very excited by and it's another opportunity for us. Um, I think every time we, we step on the park, we're trying to showcase our skills and do the best that we can, um, especially being at the World Cup uh, and coming through the journey that we've done. Um, yeah, we don't take any game for granted and, and definitely, yeah, looking forward to uh, getting out there on Sunday against India. Uh, Teja. Hey. Uh, a lot of people will base their opinions on how you perform at a World Cup. Uh, the, the, the two wins aside, it's, uh, it's been an indifferent tournament, especially for the batters. Uh, where do you think it has gone wrong and how do you ensure that you keep building on the exposure and the learnings? Yeah, uh, look, we haven't uh, put together, I think, the ideal game uh, yet, if I'm really honest, uh, where we were able to do that in the qualifiers uh, probably a bit more consistently. But then we're up against the best teams in the world, the top ten, nine teams in the world here. So, yeah, we've been tested both from a technical point of view uh, as well as a skillful point of view, whether that's against spin or against pace. I think there's some great reference points, uh, not only for us, but also guys back home. Uh, and, yeah, we've been writing down that learning. We've been discussing that learning. Um, and also the, the intensity uh, and the overall... Um, skill it requires to be able to access the ball in different areas and, and rotate strike is something that yeah, we're going to continue to work on. Uh, as you can see, it's quite important. You see people like Coley or even today, how Ben Stokes were able to get good balls of spinners just down to long on and long off and, and obviously ease that pressure. Um, yeah, so they're definitely um, reference points and they're definitely things that we've highlighted uh, throughout the course of this journey. Um, and we are a growing and a learning group uh, of, of cricketers as, as a whole team, and we pride ourselves on that. Um, so I have no doubt that we'll get back to the drawing board, uh, discuss this game, uh, and uh, yeah, take that forward. Hey. Hi. Um, you've obviously had opportunities, and just even over the past year, in both formats uh, that you play, the 
the games that you have won against the uh, four members. What, what do you think, what do you want uh, to take your game to the level where you can start beating them with consistency at tournaments like this? Is it just a matter of more, of more games? Um, yes, and it's also being able to do good things for longer. Uh, uh, whether, uh, again, to point out some quality players, like you know, one, once they get to 30 or once they get to 40, if we're talking about our batting group, uh, if we're talking about our bowling or spinners, being able to nail that uh, sort of length or area, not get bored and stick to our plans and being able to execute. And being able to execute under pressure in front of crowds or obviously against big players, uh, these guys play against each other all the time. Uh, they play in IPL, they, they, they have lots of exposure in terms of what's going on. Uh, in the Netherlands, we, we don't have a first class system. We have club cricket and then we have Netherlands A cricket where we do some touring. And then you're thrusted onto the ICC World Cup scene or the qualifiers or whatever and then you're facing um, quality, quality bowlers uh, who are bowling 135 plus or being able to turn the ball and bowl a wrong end effectively. So I think it's a mixture of both. Um, and the coaching staff, uh, in terms of the preparation and the planning over the last 12 to 14 months has been exceptional and that has bridged the gap for us. Um, so the longer we continue on this journey and, and sort of the more exposure, as you say, is one, uh, but also being able to do those good things for longer will ensure that we beat the, obviously the, the main sides a lot more. Can you beat India? <laughs> it's a game of cricket, right? So it could be possible. Uh, we play our brand of cricket. Uh, we, we do what we do well. Uh, we've got some great manoeuvres of the ball. We've got guys who can play spin well. Uh, we've also got guys who can take wickets. It, it really just, obviously, you need a bit of luck. Um, there's no doubt that they're a very strong team and, uh, you know, they, they've been playing very good cricket. Uh, but funnier things have happened in the game. Teja, uh, with this uh, defeat, uh, uh, Netherlands has to go down uh, last place. How do you feel about uh, you have another one match against strong India? Um, look, of course, it's disappointing to be in the last place. Our objective to coming to the World Cup was to, like every other team, to be in a position to play knockout cricket. Um, and as wild or as brave as that sounds, uh, you know, it's really important to have aspiration and it's really important to have something to aim for. So, you know, if you don't aim for that, you might you might get there, and which will be a good result. But if you aim for here and you don't get anywhere, that's also not ideal. But I think, as I said earlier, uh, there's been a lot of learnings. Uh, we pride ourselves on being able to evolve and grow, uh, which this exposure against the top uh, nine teams in the world has done for us. Um, so being in last place, you know, that's where that's the cricket that we're playing right now. Uh, but I'm sure that we'll pick ourselves up and, and you know, move forward in the coming tournaments. We have the T20 World Cup next year that we've already qualified for. So you know, that's another opportunity for us to build towards. Uh, and I have no doubt that uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be causing a few upsets there and, and playing well and, and, and wanting to play in the semifinals as well. Uh, Sri Lanka and Netherlands are the two teams qualified for this World Cup after qualifying round uh, played in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Do you happy the way you played uh, really well? Or uh, what are the pos positives, I think, because uh, you uh, you did really be upset against uh, tough teams like South Africa? Um, uh, look, uh, at that qualifier tournament, we, we played good, consistent cricket throughout. Um, we, we didn't bat well two games, and those were against Sri Lanka, unfortunately. Uh, but we chased 375 against the West Indies. Uh, we chased a number of other scores. Uh, we put away teams. We were more ruthless. Um, so again, it's just being able to transfer that style of play against these top nine teams in the world, which will take a lot of learning. Um, if you look at someone like Afghanistan, they've been at the, world, at the last three World Cups now and look at what they're able to achieve. So this is the first time that we're here in the last decade or so. Um, so again, well, you know, Afghanistan didn't win a game, uh, one World Cup, and they won one in 2015. So there are teams that come in and get exposure also have a tough time. So we see this as a, as a learning block, um, but we're out there to compete. No one comes to, to lose or to play badly. Um, so, yeah. Last one for this gentleman. Hi, uh, you were quite competitive for the first 44 or 43 hours 
what happened uh, you ran out of team just like your campaign the, as the tournament is ending you are not giving you able to give the best um yeah i wouldn't say that i think uh all the guys uh <laughs> are trying very hard uh we're a very hard working group no one really misses an optional training uh because for us to get opportunities to train on wickets like this or to be able to uh, have proper facilities is something that we um fully you know throw ourselves into um so i think obviously as the tournament wears on just with any other team like you know when you're playing hard cricket it's tough uh, it's, it's not the easiest thing to be doing um but yeah look there's there's been a little bit of sickness around the team and stuff like that but guys are still finding up and taking ownership so which is really nice um we're going to pick ourselves up as best as possible for the india game and uh, we look forward